How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do one of the contracts, one of the few ones I've got left that's on there, Burning Forest. This one's called uh, Putting Out the Fire at the Storage 2. It's, in theory, pretty simple. Um, there's obviously two places you've got to dump 4,400 litres of water. Uh, yeah, for this one I selected, in the end I kind of did a couple of military vehicles, so the front one's actually the ANK Civilian. <laughs> Say I've done army vehicles and then I literally picked the civilian version. Um, but yeah, obviously that's the one that it lets you put the uh, saddle low on and stuff. And then for the rear truck I've got the Navistar. And then, uh, yeah, like, basically when you travel across the map, it deletes the water out of your trailers. So instead I'm going to have to, when I travel to the burned forest, go to that water tower there, and then I've got to kind of head to the north of the map. There's not really many, like amazing options it's not too bad in the end this mission but it's just a bit odd the way like each place needs 4400 liters but this trailer holds 3700 um i believe if you run like the setup where you've got a truck with the actual water tank on its back and then tow a trailer with it as well the trailer will hold 2000 and the truck will hold 1800 so you could have 3800 but you're still going to be 600 short per place you got to go um, and then, yeah, like I say, if uh, you go through the gateway, it deletes water. So I can't fill these up on the Albany River map, which would be nice because there's actually a couple of water towers that are pretty near to the main ro road, really, just before I get to uh, the Burn Forest gateway. But, yeah, it'll delete them. If I did, like, a road train situation with, um, you know, two trucks with tanks that have got two trailers, one, there'd be no point in filling them up this side because it just... It, would empty the trailers but not the trucks that's the weird thing you can travel through the gateway if you've got a truck full of water um but yeah in the end i mean it's still uh, it's going to force me to have to go to like a water tower on a burn forest in the end anyway but yeah like i said it's just a bit weird the way they do it because there's not really any sensible way to do this mission without uh kind of not so much doubling back on yourself more um, like I say, once I've delivered, say I send one of these trucks to each location, they're going to be a little bit short, so I'm going to then have to send something else. And essentially do the same journey again, and there's no real option for, say, like, setting up... If I was able to somehow connect, like, another trailer between the trucks or whatever, and um, take, like, a truck with a water tank on its back... I mean, in the end, like, towards the end of the video, I found the solution which is about as quick as it's gonna kind of solve that situation really cutting over this little bit got uh i think yeah the truck behind me the navistar i think that gets starts leaning in the ditch a little bit but it's going all right i even managed to just keep it pinned in high gear yeah the trailer starts slipping off into the down the ditch but it was all right kept it pinned and we're all good um yeah obviously i've got a pair of goddamn horses with me because i have fuel mainly this lead truck at the minute it's the ank like i say mk38 civilian thing. Uh, it's only got a 200 litre fuel tank, so it's pretty small, and to its credit, on its own, like once you wind it up in high gear and that, it does motor along pretty well. Um, two things I've sort of noticed, I've raised the suspension on it, I've put the active on it. It seems to raise like the nose of the truck a bit more, and then it sort of feels like, not like it's wheeling, but I don't know, it's just kind of scrapping its front wheels around a lot. Um, but yeah, in a road train situation like this, because it kind of caps the speed you can do, uh, you end up kind of burning a lot of fuel with this vehicle, really, for the for the amount of speed you're getting out of it. I don't necessarily... The Navistar, the good thing about that, it's got like a 340 litre fuel tank, so nearly twice the size of this. But the Navistar does drink like a maniac as well, and um, I'd imagine in this same scenario, sort of doing a road train, it's going to nail the fuel on either one, really. I mean, not that I'd recommend... Pet well, I would rather do it like this way with the high gear because I'm going to split these up at some points throughout the video um, yeah if you took something with like an advanced special gearbox say like double dans they'd work out pretty well because the uh, it's actually got quite a nice pace in the advanced special gearbox nice high ground clearance you can get a uh, saddle low on there double trailers uh, yeah that would work out pretty well see the loaf just missed the top of that bridge by a whisker I will say though um, by the way balance in the loaf on these trailers to get them like perfectly on there where they're dead centered so they're not even leaning over to the side a little bit is pretty goddamn awkward to say the least. I uh, I already knew it was because I've already previously tried it. <laughs> if you put him on the 
trailer or the water tank add-on on trucks there's more of like a flattened off hitbox on the top and it's way easier you just put them on really and that's about it um, yeah with this one it, unless it's like perfectly centered it just once you release the crane it like leans over to one side and uh, I was yeah being picky about it like I said though it's just uh, in place of roof racks really I suppose I could have I could have taken something like the new... There was a few trucks I did actually um, kind of want to choose from. I even travelled to one of the Russian maps uh, to buy some Russian trucks. Because obviously, yeah, you still <laughs> you still can't buy half the trucks in the game unless you keep travelling across the other map. Which wasn't too bad back in the day when the loading screens were like 20 or 30 seconds or something. But um, yeah, these days, my loading screens though once I'm on the game and I've already loaded it up and all the rest of it, it probably still takes a minute or two, or it certainly feels like it, to travel over to a new gateway. But when I first turn the game on, and it goes from, you know, where you can click like new game, continue, mod browser, all that, and it starts loading up, it's honestly like, it's got to be getting on for four or five minutes. I clicked it on the other night um, when I was getting like the first half of this video, because I was getting blue screens again. Um, yeah, when I clicked on the game, I went and stroked my cat for a bit. I stuck the kettle on, made a coffee. Uh, yeah, my cat was just spying on God knows what the traffic probably out the window. Um, and then I came back, and it was still loading up. <laughs> and to the point, I thought, oh, has it finally crashed? And then, uh, yeah, at the last minute, the actual loading bar started moving. Um, yeah, I'm getting a bit hesitant now when I was pulling up to that gateway. Uh, it did blue screen me, so I had to keep loading it back up and trying again. I suppose in the tunnel's defence... I did literally try to run a train on it. <laughs> I knew the game was not going to be happy with me trying to take this lot through uh, the gateway, and yeah, it wasn't. There's uh, another loaf just happened to be sat at the main entrance there, so yeah, that's what she said. Um, and he had 70 fuel in him, so I moved that over to the MK. Um, yeah, you can see I just did on the camera there. It's sorry, it was a little bit of a crappy kind of scanning over, but um, the water tower on the map is. Yeah, where I was like drawing, drawing the blue lines to. It's kind of just, yeah, in the middle of nowhere, really. And the other water tower is, I'd say, arguably even worse. If you came to this map from the other gateway, it probably wouldn't be as bad. But you're essentially then going to run right up the left-hand side of the map to like the top corner. And then have to go down the cliffs through that burnt-out big factory place. Um, yeah, like I so, say, whereas versus... Like on Albany River, um, you already had a water tower that's fairly near to those double bridges, kind of near the roundabout and that. Um, and then you end up building another one, kind of just a bit further up, so... Uh, yeah, it'd make life pretty convenient if you could actually take water across the gateways. So let me lean on, you see? Loaf knows though. Seen there was an emergency going on, he bailed off. Which I wasn't really fussed because, like I say, I know these are they're a little bit awkward to get on there. I mainly just wanted the loafs, at least probably on this map. Um, and then once I collect the water, just to refuel the trucks, and then I know they can make the run from the water tower to where I've got to deliver the stuff to. I'm surprised now, the this MK um, started getting bogged down a bit in the water. I did actually, I've put the chain on this, and the main reason was... Um, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago and uh, Mark Rowe said in the comments to me a couple of weeks ago and I agree that when you put the muds on, um, I think along the roads particularly there's kind of more rolling resistance so it's harder to kind of wind up to the top end of the gears uh, than yeah, like when you've got the chain there just seems to be less rolling resistance and yeah I do kind of think that is the case and I knew for the majority of this sort of mission really. I was going to be spending a bulk of the time uh, on the roads and that anyway and then these little sections where I'm cutting through on the mud. To be fair um, I don't really, the custom muds that just sit nice and wide they kind of just slip around and take quite a while on that kind of muddy surface as well. I told you that tree was on the list the other day. Like perfectly wrecks that corner from being able to like cut it and miss the puddle really. Just about enough turning circle to get around here. And then, yeah, like I said, this is the water tower at the top. And there is, there's three water towers, or water booms, I should say, on this map that you can fix up 
but I've not even bothered and I don't even know if I will because I already repaired is it four of them on the Albane River map they're of no use once you fix them you have to still deliver water to them so you may as well just deliver whatever water you're going to deliver to them to the destination you need to go to so uh, yeah there's no discernible advantage really like I say unless you did it deliver the water separately and set all the pre arranged things up to make this mission quick but you'll uh, yeah save 10-15 minutes on this mission it'll take you a couple of hours <laughs> to save those 10-15 minutes so probably not the most uh, useful. I don't know why I think it was because this was the vehicle I'd turn behind me and just I did clip the uh, there's a crane on the road in Albany River I think when you bounce around but you're not in the actual truck because I did uh, I took considerable time perfectly lining this loaf up on the trailer but after I travelled through the gateway he's, uh, he's got his lean on yeah, it's funny I was just looking there how <laughs> how much the Navistar did actually blend into the terrain then got the uh, camo paint on it just sort of actually lined up pretty nicely back there it's a bit of an awkward section climbing over here I've been down here a few times because it's kind of one of the most handy ways to cut through considering how rough and it almost looks like you're pretty much guaranteed to roll as you go down there I've actually it's gone pretty successfully and I've taken the Paystar down there uh, probably twin was it the Tagers maybe back in the day and I think there's another vehicle as well or maybe even a couple more as I've been heading towards the warehouse uh, it's like a bit further north on this map see Loaf again he knew there was an emergency he starts bailing off And yeah, this Navistar, that's also got chained on, but obviously this one doesn't have the option of MUDs, so it was kind of a bit of an easier choice to make. Maybe I just got a bit of a better line. I'm not sure with the uh, MK38, if I just got stuck on, like, there's a few dead trees in that water, and they can be a bit iffy. Because once I got to, like, here with the ANK, it was kind of pulling its way through the mud, but I'd say overall it looked like the Navistar put in a, a little bit of a better effort then. And yeah, Navstar, it's always been a good truck. I've always liked this one. It's, uh, I'd easily say, still still in my top sort of favourite trucks. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the most usable truck, so there's other trucks that I just use more because they're, they're just more accessible, all the different setups and options you can do on them. Nice little jump there. Loaf goes for it. It's Tank Slapper. I'll make this corner. See the loaf's flying around. What you do is you just ignore him, turn the camera away, and when you look back a few seconds later, he's just back on his wheels. See? Every goddamn time. Yeah, even like this little yard here where you collect the water from, they could have made it. There's a, quite a few yards I've noticed on this phase where they're sort of awkwardly narrow, considering we're generally going to be taking like big, fat, hefty trailers there. Not that it matters, I mean, it's these trailers are a piece of piss to turn around but you know I'm just logistically if I was going to build that water tower and it was mine <laughs> I think I'd make the yard a little bit wider on the understanding that everyone's going to have to turn around um, yeah so now both these are full of water 3700 litres each um, I've basically, well you've seen the red loaf behind me, I drove uh, like army camo loaf back over here, uh, refilled the truck so the ANK is at 200 litres, that's its max, uh, the Navistar is at 340, and then I'm kind of going to double back on myself a little bit, cut through the sawmill, and head over to the road, because the only other option really is running up this road, past the warehouse, and I'd sort of pop out near the top, but after how the ANK was kind of struggling in that water a bit, Plus, it's kind of like, at the minute, I'm going to do a road train. Just otherwise, I've got to do the same journey kind of twice in a row. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try and just head back over to the road sort of sooner rather than later. And at this point, I made the Navistar the lead truck just because, one, to sort of change it up a bit as I had been using the ANK, but two, because this has the bigger fuel tank and generally the lead vehicle in a road train uses more fuel. The one behind just seems to be like coasting on sort of half or third revs or something, which is kind of what makes it force you to go pretty slow. But um, yeah, I actually think it was overall probably a better option. I mean, for the first half of the map, 
on the Albany River, it probably wasn't that bad having the ANK as the lead vehicle because it's quite punchy with a high gear. But yeah, in this sort of terrain, the uh, the Navistar, and like I say, it's one of them vehicles. It's got yeah all-wheel drive, but it's not got diff locks. I think is the way around it is. Um, but it's just always been a nicely weighted vehicle. So even if it's not necessarily outperforming other vehicles, it's just when you're driving it and like when you you know bounce over rocks or hit a bump, it does feel like it responds a bit more realistically than some of the trucks in the game that just don't seem to have anywhere near enough weight to them. See, it's nice in road trains like that as well, where my Navistar was bogging down a bit then, but then the vehicle behind hasn't quite got to that rough terrain yet, so that bumps into my trailer, gives me a little boost, and then by the time the ANK starts bogging down and the uh, slack in the winch starts getting taken up, now like the front end of the Navistar's clawing back into like easier terrain and kind of, yeah, it worked together pretty well. Let's quick look inside the Navistar. I forgot to take those, like, grates off the windows. Not that it really matters because it's pretty rare I'm even in uh, kind of in the cab view. Yeah the sawmill it, it's a little bit awkward kind of at the other end of this sawmill. It actually goes pretty well. Um, but I think it's about the best road kind of cut to cut along. The only other one was after I went down the hill after leaving the uh, water tower is kind of go off to the left but it just there's not really a straight line it just goes really far over to the left you kind of got to double back on yourself a bit not double back but you just yeah you're driving in like a massive arch instead of just cutting straight across this is kind of a little bit better just about made that corner yeah getting around those logs in the corner is a little bit iffy and there's a couple of like immovable trees and that so you've got to watch them but I kind of went wider than I planned and then, <laughs> that's what she said, um, it kind of all worked out pretty well in the end. See then now, you see how the terrain changes, like this looks pretty boggy but the Navistar is, uh, is actually pretty competent like going across there. And yeah, I wasn't uh, too sure, like, say, which vehicles to take in the end. I went and bought, like, this... What's that new step pike? Is it the, um... I bought that. I bought a Phoenix. I bought a couple of Tagers. Probably some Dolphins. I've got quite a few of them by now. Um, yeah, I couldn't really decide in the end. I've already done quite a few videos where... Well, not quite a few, but, like, I've... Done, say, double Tagers, double Navistars, double Dolphins. And, uh, yeah, in the end, I just kind of went for these... One, it's one of the only road trains I've done in this phase where I've not had like twin vehicles that are the same. Um, but like I say, I've just uh, picked them and they happen to be able to uh, both have like military camo. I thought I'd go for the old uh, yeah army theme for this one. The old fire rescue. And yeah, I, uh, I've no regrets kind of heading over to the road here because it was a nice little journey going through there. I was actually pretty happy with how the Navistar was performing considering it's also towing the ANK. Um, I think, yeah, I've got the engine on on the A and K though, so that will be using a bit of its own fuel as well. Um, yeah, but it, you know, it wasn't just then like a solid 20 minutes of slowly crawling through the mud. I cut ahead a bit there. We're just now nearer the north of the map. That road going off to the right is like the farm in the top right. Um, yeah, it was just a non-eventful drive along the road really. Just zigzagging all the way up to the uh, top corner, so save a little bit of time. Not entirely sure what I got caught on then. I think it might have been me crashing into the barrier but either way the ANK kind of bounced into me at the perfect moment and I just kind of set off pretty quickly on. It worked out nicely. Some nice drift action there. I was pretty happy with that. And let's be honest, you see, see two trucks coming and the driver is drifting the truck and trailer that he's not even in. You know you're about to get rescued. Actually not a bad little pace as well, it's made it into high gear and uh, again one thing I always did like as well with the Navistar, power wise, is the way when you put it in high gear, I said ages ago when Jeff who like discovered the Jeff special told me where you like put it in high gear and it kind of boosts the power, I think once I might have accidentally done it in the Navistar, it was on uh, Black River just past the farm, 
and I kind of went into a dip as I put it in high gear and I sort of shot off, did a wheelie and crashed into a tree. And I, I didn't know that I'd done that, so I just kind of thought, oh, that was weird. That was like an oddly great amount of power where I kind of went flying out the other side of the ditch. Um, yeah, but I just like how much kind of oomph it gives you in high gear. It almost behaves a little bit like a mini uh, twin steer. And then, yeah, at this point, splitting the vehicles up because one of the locations is up this road and then the second one is kind of a bit further along. Those trees are a complete pain in the ass. Probably feel a little bit better if the trees looked a bit meatier, but the fact that they're kind of like a relatively narrow burnt twiglet on the ground, I should be able to just run them over and snap them. They're an absolute nightmare for like locking your vehicle in place. It's like bogging me down quite a lot. I'm sure it was on this corner. It wouldn't let me get... Oh, no, I am in second, I believe, at the minute. But then suddenly on the other side... You can just see it sort of caught its speed again. I'm sure it was this one. Yeah, like there, it's bogging me down. I even looked then for a second, like, what the hell? Have I run out of fuel? But nope. Stuck in high, and then it was suddenly fine again. Um, yeah, by now, I will say as well, though, these missions are relatively pointless in the sense obviously it's part of the contract so if you're doing them to like tick them off the list yeah all you end up getting from them, yeah, let's get the shit out of that box I don't know why it makes me happy every time <laughs> um, yeah you just unlock like the warehouses you can then scavenge one metal rolls and one metal beams from each location by now I don't even think I need either of them materials anymore Um, yeah, so you just, I don't know, kind of doing it for the for the sake of it. It's funny as well, because since this phase came out, I'm sure when I was originally loading it up, it said I was about like 70... I'm sure it was like 76% completed this playthrough. And then I remember a few weeks back it went up to 77%. And now for me, I'm sure it's still on 77%, even though I've near, near enough completed this entire phase. I'm sure it only bumped me up like 1% and then obviously the next phase will come out and it will drop me back down. I remember I got into the high 80s I think before they started releasing phases a bit quicker and I kind of dropped back a bit. I think one of the main ones is phase 2, the Yukon. Flooded Foothills and Big Salmon Peak, they're the ones that are, I've actually got like most of the missions still to do. Had a bit of uh, yeah, like lagging going on with that phase, and then they just so happened to release mods kind of halfway through that phase, so it's a pretty good excuse for me to just sort of mess around with mods and yeah, kind of just didn't really get around to doing quite a lot of the missions really, like the gold, something to do with gold. <laughs> I remember that going up into the mountains. I mean, I did get a fair few hours of missions done, but I'd say out of all the phases, that's probably got the most left for me. Uh, yeah, I ran over. Oh yeah, was it? It might have been one of them anti-terrorist barricades. I smacked into it and I think it blew my tyre. But <laughs> I have no regrets. It's funny though how much it started dragging. And even though it looks like it blew the uh, left side like rear axle, the one nearest the front though, um, it started pulling over to the right quite a lot when I was going along the road there. And then yeah, these stupid bloody trees again. It was funny as well because when I damaged my suspension on it, it actually looked like my wheels drove over that tree easier than before my suspension was broken. And then it was really the trailer, I think, that got more hooked up on it. But then this point, yeah, they prove they're still a complete pain in the ass. I mean, look at them. You would just snap that tree for fun. Truck did take a bit of a beating. Let's see if I had a, uh, a loaf for me, though. Would have been spare tyres. Would have fixed my suspension. Got it all done. It's weird, you know, right now on this footage, I pull up here, I do not see, unless that was a perfect glitch, I do not see me deliver the water, but I did. But the footage is just gone, that little blip of footage. So yeah, like I say, you can't, if I took that ANK to the, where the Navistar went, uh, you're just going to run out of water either way. So I had to send in an emergency loaf. Um, in the end, I took this six... What's it called? The 566A. 
I will say as well, I mean, considering he's got a uh, life on the roof, look how well it corners. Corners like an absolute beauty. Like it sits pretty flat as it corners. And the loaf is basically like a giant beacon shouting Nino. It's like the emergency response unit. It's pretty quick. Tech kicks in. Let's get a move on. These two, even though this actually has a weird gearbox though, it has only got six gears, which normally the higher range does have eight. I couldn't resist as well. If you squint, it looks a little bit like when ET was sat in the bike basket going past the moon. <laughs> you have to squint quite a lot though, like completely, and then imagine ET going past the moon, and then they look pretty similar. And um, yeah, so like I say, for this one. I edited bits out, I mean there was cutting across there, but I won't uh, leave the whole journey in. It would end up being like a, a bloody Lord of the Rings series going on for this mission. Um, yeah, wobbling my way down to this water tower, which is on the Albany River map, not too far from the uh, the gateway. And yeah, this can hold 1800 litres, and I believe I'm 700 short per location that I went to. And like I say, it'd just be nice if I was already doing like a road train, so I already kind of figured this out at the beginning of the, when I was setting off with the mission, but there was just no other logical, decent way of doing it. It'd be cool if you could have like a little uh, tank in the rear of the loaf, and if that held 700, <laughs> for example, then each loaf I took with the uh, trucks would have just worked out perfectly. So yeah, I travelled through the gateway, now I'm basically at the point where I'm going to swerve off to the right and head to like down the same road that the Navistar went down. And uh, yeah, 700 short for each location, even if you brought kind of like a truck with its own water tank and then its water trailer, you'd still have to fill them up on this map because it'd empty the trailer, um, but you'd have 3800 so you'd still be 600 short per location, so it's going to happen to you one way or another. Like I said, even if you had like, um, say a scout trailer, but like a, a water version instead of the... Uh, fuel version. I'm not sure, but it just it just seems a bit of an odd pairing of numbers that they picked for like how much water you need at each location and what each different vehicle can hold. They sort of don't line up at all, which doesn't really bother me because you can just keep taking enough vehicles until you exceed whatever number you need, but it doesn't allow you to kind of plan a smart way, you know, where it all works out very neat and nice and you kind of feel like you actually helped attain that smoothness rather than just kind of looking into it or whatever. But either way, it is what it is. I wasn't too fussed. It was a... Uh, yeah. I was quite funny driving this thing around. I was actually surprised as well, like I say, with the loaf sat on top, which I was just being obnoxious. I kind of thought, oh, it'll probably fall off at some point, but I just wanted to demonstrate that when you've got the fire thing on the back of this truck, it's kind of got its own platform on the roof you can fit a loaf on, so major roof rack options going on. Uh, little mate, moral support loaf, whatever you need. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I, I was rallying it around. I didn't jump the bloody roundabout, so it's not like I was, you know, trying to take it easy and everything. I was obviously, as I was boating around a little bit sometimes, I was steering into it. But uh, yeah, this thing's actually pretty nicely planted. And I think as well, you can put the muds on this, but I didn't. I went for the chained again because I know I'd pretty much be riding along the road. Um, but yeah, with the custom muds on, in theory should be even more planted. And like I said as well, with the high range gearbox, it's uh, it's at, like this is classed as a truck, it's got a high range gearbox so it should be um, like an 8 speed but yeah it's a 6 speed and you can tell there's like a little bit kind of off the top sort of thing, it definitely won't go as rapid as like the 8 speeds one can but for the most part it doesn't really matter, the speed it can reach in 6 is healthy I would say. Um, yeah, I've done a couple of jumps on the roundabout, like on its own as well. Obviously, this is probably not the most efficient way to travel with it, like with a, uh, a tank full of water. Although it doesn't, again, doesn't really seem to be affecting it that bad, really. And the funny thing is, as well, as I got here, for anyone who thinks, well, you know, that is an obnoxious loaf, and I didn't need to bring it. <laughs> it turns out when I got to here, I didn't even realise I uh, thought I was stuck on like a twig, one of those stupid trees. But yeah, I had run out of fuel, so. Switch over to the loaf, transfer some juice over, get a little victory horn, 
pack him back on the roof. Day saved. This engine takes ages to fire up for a little truck. Yeah, there's like a big fat rock I got stuck on. All just kind of drifted my way around that uh, annoying tree. Going through here though, there's two trees lying across it and they're like pinball pinger flapper thingies, whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, they're just annoying. You can't really, you know, you steer one way, you're going to uh, just get caught more on the other one. The definition of insanity. Do the same thing and expect a different result. Uh, in the end I decided, yeah, just bring it back a bit more, try and just rally over one of them. And it actually went incredibly well. I thought I was going to get a snagged up and have to fire a winch out and all sorts. I don't know why my phone keeps randomly deciding to play videos by itself. It's definitely got to be on its way out. It keeps crashing like every five minutes as well. Or it was the other day. Normally when YouTube crashes, like when I open it up again it says I don't know, like an unexpected problem, click here to continue watching the video you were before it crashed. It doesn't even offer me that anymore, it's like it just completely has no idea what I was watching or anything. Yeah, bit of rallying at the end. Uh, we got there though, even though the trees were being annoying. Drop that water off, done. The actual mission payout, is it eight or nine grand? It's not that great considering like that caring for tourist mission or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, where I had to just drive to two locations the other day, and that paid about the same. And then, like I said, for doing it, you unlock, like, you can scavenge the materials, one roll and one beam, which is pretty crap, really. You can get that from the railway station. But anyway, that's about it for today, though. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members. Get his all loaf, because he gets you across the line with his fuel. And I'll be back soon.